Hi, Anne. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> I think I'll ever get that. <laughs> yes, you'll get it one day. It doesn't matter. How are it you? Doesn't. I'm really good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good. It sounds like you've had a fulfilling week. I did. I had a great week. Yeah. Very good. I see I that did. Dorta is here as well. Dorta, it says connecting with audio, but it doesn't seem like you've actually been able to do it. Okay, wait, maybe it's coming on now. Mm. Let's see, Alina is here. Wait, okay, Martine is here. Hi, Martine. Hi. I've got Alina and Dorta. Katie. There she is. There's our, there's your face, Dorta. Hi. <laughs> And Alex is coming on. Let's see. And Shayla is coming on. Hi. All right. Hold on now. Okay, so I had messed up because um, I was talking to Myra 15 minutes ago. And I'm afraid that uh, I forgot to stop recording the, the session. So we were having our pre-session discussion and it was all being recorded. So I had to restart the call and there were five people that were on the call at that time. So I hope they got the message that they need to call back in again. Me and technology, okay? It'll be really great when I have my personal assistant and she can actually help me with all these things. But until then, so we can get our schedules coordinated. This is the way it's going to go. But Myra should be back here by now. Where is Myra? Hey, Shayla. All Hello. Right. Hi. All right. So I'm just waiting for Myra. And um, While I'm waiting, let me just actually make sure I have all my documents opened. So while we're waiting, I would love to find out from you all. Um, I want to make sure that you all have some hot water somewhere, okay? Like, who's, who's using dried or fresh herbs? Okay, only two of you are using dried or fresh herbs? No, I am too. Shayla is as well. Okay, who's using essential oils? Me too. <laughs> okay, um, and who's using, uh, wait, I think that's the only choice we have, right? Okay, so um, regardless, what we're going to do, just to kind of give you a little feeling of how the day is going to go, um, it's not a day, the hour and a half. It's going to be about an hour and a half of us being together today. So I hope you're comfortable. Um, but what I'm going to do is talk to you first about um, the new moon in Gemini. This is a really big time for people who have strong desires and um, a strong sense of... Um, wanting to achieve something. It's not that you want to achieve something really big. You could, it could be that you want to achieve a relationship or you want to achieve better health or you want to achieve a better relationship with your, yourself. This new moon in Gemini is very much oriented toward you getting really, really clear about what it is you want for yourself, but also getting very, very um, clear about your commitment to following through, all right? So let me see, I have a couple of chats here, so let me check in with everyone. Alina says, hello. Hi, Alina. <laughs> so you didn't get the recipe, so you're observing Ramadan, so you're not able to do tea. That's okay, because you can, with me, you can do um, the, uh, I'm not gonna actually be ingesting my, um, essential oils because they are not food grade, but you can use them for um, inhalation, right? So the first part, actually the only thing that we're going to be doing during the ceremony is inhaling, 
right? I actually don't have you taking in the tea. You can do that afterward at your own discretion. Um, but Myra and I really had the idea for you to really just take those herbs and, um, you know, the, the aromatic essences of them. And that's what the uh, ceremony is going to be about. So Myra has joined us now. Hi, Myra. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So I'm going to switch the view here. I think you can okay. see. So I think the way the view is set that who, if I speak, you'll see me. And then if Myra says something, then you will see her. Okay. Um, so Myra, what I was doing is just kind of getting the ladies, um, giving kind of an overview of how things are going to go. All right. And um, and it was a very good question that was asked by Alina. She said, um, she's currently observing Ramadan, so she's not able to have tea right now. She's not able to drink, right? So um, she said that she did, uh, she did do the coursework, and she saw the ritual. Um, oh, you did a ritual. Okay, that's fine. She wants to know what oils she can use, and I was, and what I was doing is explaining to her that. Um, she, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be drinking my uh, my emulsion because I have these essential oils that are actually not meant to be ingested. So I'm gonna. Be, the 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 um, ceremony is actually about inhaling the yes. essences, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Very good. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and maybe tell um, tell Alina what oils we're going to be using today or what she can use for her um, ritual? Yes. Okay. And um, yes, the, the main purpose of this is actually to inhale the the volatile compounds, the aromas. So I won't be drinking, although I'm not using essential oils. Um, if you've ever had a um, a cup of rosemary tea, it's strong. It is not a a very uh, good tasting tea. Um, you would probably have to add, you know which we're already combining other herbs together, but a whole lot of honey in there. So <laughs> I find that taste a little too distracting right now to where I don't want to have to take a sip of something and like kind of jitter and be like, ooh, you know? So it's really what we're looking for is the aroma that's coming out from the steam. So I, I went with fresh herbs because it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's on the natural side. It's what I usually work with, but in this case, essential oils would work just fine. And um, some of the, of the herbs that we would be working with that you can also just do with the oils would be, you have your lavender, um, your citruses, which could be your lemon, lemongrass, your orange. We have rosemary, jasmine. Um, we have rose. peppermint. Peppermint rose. and rose, yes. Mm. Yes. So, and it's something that I probably... Um, should have even maybe brought up before where sometimes we're found in, in a situation where, you know, we, we, are, we don't have the, the, the hot water, the boiling water, the steam. You can grab a rose and just bring it to your nose and just, you know, you still get the aroma, the senses, the, the essence of the rose. There you go. Exactly. So it's really just taking in those aromas and being able to meditate and connect with them. So no worries if, you know, it's not, again, like I said, I have, I have my little concoction ready, but I will definitely be meditating on it with inhaling the aromas and not actually tasting um, my tea this morning, drinking it. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for the excellent question, Alina. And thank you for the excellent answer, Myra. So I am Crystal Lynn Bell, and I want to welcome you all here today to this very special um, new moon manifestation with sacred herbs ritual that I'm doing with Myra. Myra and I just met, um, what, two weeks ago two weeks ago yeah. yeah and i'll tell you 
I always use my instinct when I'm doing things, you know, and I have to admit, I do not have the most grounded, predictable life. My life is very unpredictable, but I'm also realizing that this is just the way life goes and it gives me tremendous flexibility. The thing that it also does is brings me in contact with really awesome people and um, lets me have really awesome experiences. So um, Myra, so even, even the, um, the Facebook group through which, of which most of you all are a part, even that was a whim that I had just, it's only been five weeks since that group opened. I literally am like, I think I'm going to open a Facebook group for heart-centered entrepreneurs, and I think I'm just going to do this. And it was a beautiful flowering of all these wonderful people coming together with so much um, beauty and tenderness. And I'm just really amazed by... Um, by how wonderful this has been, and I feel so blessed. And through that connection, you know, through this group on Facebook, of course, I've met every one of you and all the other members, but I've also met Myra, and she says, I'm an herbalist, and I'm like, hey, do you want to do something together? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, hey, do you want to do it next week? And she's like, well, I've never done that before, but yeah, let's do it. And here we are. Boom, <laughs> rocking and rolling. Manifesting. Right. So what we're going to do is give um, just a brief introduction. I'm going to introduce um, you, uh, uh, introduce myself formally, then Myra's going to introduce herself formally, and then we're going to get right into the ritual. Okay. So, um, my name is Crystal Lynn Bell, and I'm a spiritual life coach. I help women awaken their inner badass butterfly so that they can break free of the prison of unworthiness. That's my thing, right? So I work with women all around the world. I've been doing this now for about eight years, and I absolutely love it. Being a spiritual life coach has given me the opportunity to travel the world, and most importantly, to like work with people I absolutely adore. My practice is thriving and every day I'm in contact with wonderful people like you and we work together in an intimate way for them to transform. So I'm so glad that you're here. I'm gonna talk to you more about this ritual after Myra gives her, um, her introduction, okay? Myra, are you okay? Um, <laughs> She's like, I better close the door. The kids are getting up. Yes, my tribe is here and uh, <laughs> love being quiet. It's like, oh, what? Mom asked us to be quiet and let's do the opposite. Let's not be quiet. <laughs> yes. So, yes, my name is Myra and I am a stay at home. I work from home um, and I'm a mom. That's, that's my, my big, huge uh, full time job. <laughs> But I am also an herbalist, and um, I have, in the last decade, um, taken my my herbal career to a little bit of a different alley from which I first started. When this uh, Crystal Lynn asking me to, to participate in this meditation and bring herbs in such a spiritual manner. Um, really was a nice gift and a surprise because it was kind of bringing out my inner child. This is how I got started with herbs. Um, my mother, my grandmother was a midwife. And as a young little girl, um, my first introduction with herbs was in a very spiritual way. Um, so it's really nice to be able to kind of tap back into my roots on how I got started with herbalism. Um, just as I got older, um, I also needed to make more of, of a physiological connection with the herbs. And that is where I took my studies on a different direction. And, um, you know, right now, I feel like we are entering a, a stage where the medicinal aspects of herbs are actually starting to be acknowledged and 
respected a lot more, um, especially in the United States. I, I love to travel and I'm kind of baffled on how I can go to another country and your actual medical doctor will prescribe you, you know, aromatherapy or certain herbs or concoctions or decoctions to help you with your health. And here in the United States, um, for a long time, it was frowned upon. It's, it was just something that medical doctors are still not able to do. So um, what I wanted to do was to be able to, I guess in a way, find validity to the medicinal herbs and to the magic that I know they possess in a more scientific type of world. And that is where um where my studies had led me more of a, a lot of um physiology and anatomy and knowing how i can um use those and right now and part of why i was taking this course and i was called to take this course is because um although i have a very fruitful job and i love what i do um i feel like it's time for me to start um putting a lot more energy into finding a way where I can work with my passion, with which, which is herbs, which is combining balance and health for prevention of having to need all of those other medical interventions. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Great. Thank you. And um, I'm so glad that you're here and courageous to do this, Myra. And I'm so happy to be um, reintroducing you. Like, I know you're already back into your herbalism, like back into your roots, but I'm glad to be initiating you into the public like this. So it's a real, um, it's a real pleasure for me. It's been a pleasure working with you on this project. So, um, Again, welcome everyone. And what I wanna do right now is I wanna remind everyone that exactly in one hour, so 48 minutes after, uh, sorry, no, 38, sorry. Double checking, just because why would I rely on my memory? Hello. Right now here in, in California, it's 947 at 9, no, at, at, sorry, at 1038 in my zone. So it, in, um, in just about 40, 50 minutes, okay? In 55, zero minutes, um, the new moon will reach her apex in the sign of Gemini. So at that time, by that time, you all will be in meditation. So we timed this uh, presentation exactly um, in this way, intentionally. This was, <laughs> this was very much an intentional process. And um, so you all can kind of align your intention with ours and align the intention of your goals and desires with ours. So I'm going to just highlight everyone who's on the call right now. We have a speaker view of everyone who's here. There are 13 of us right now. And what I want you all, um, I just want to see with a show of hands, who has had the chance to do the new moon worksheet that I created um, in the, uh, that I created, just the, the new moon worksheet. Has anyone done that yet? Um, no one has done that worksheet. Sorry, you guys, my internet connection is not um, working very well right now. Hold on. Okay. Um, I'm noticing that it's slowing down. Can you all hear me okay? We can now. Now you can hear me. All right. Um, let me get again that show of hands of people who actually have done the, the Gemini worksheet. Okay, three, four, five. So half of you have done the worksheet, okay? It's no problem. But here's, here's the reason why I give you that worksheet. And I like you to do the worksheet ahead of the, um, of the meditation. 
This is for everything all the time. This is a super general statement and it's super obvious, but I want you all to be aware of it. When you sit down and you intentionally start thinking about something, what you're doing is starting to shape the universe. So if you imagine that life force energy is actually the thing that we're seeing, like we look at this mouse and we think, oh, this is a mouse, but actually this is life force energy. This mouse was created eons ago when whoever thought about this exact version was sitting down thinking, huh, <laughs> huh, I want a mouse that drives everybody crazy. This is my mouse, but this mouse drives me crazy. I got a love-hate relationship with this mouse. Just kidding. I'm sure he wasn't thinking that. I'm sure he was thinking super duper mousy thingy, right? So when you sit down and, and you do the worksheets that I give you, what you're doing is you're saying to the universe, this is what I want. This is what I don't want right? And when you come into ritual, all that work has already been done within you and within the universe. So when we do the ritual, we do the ritual with the intention of saying yes to what we have created. So when you sit down and you do the worksheets, your mind is working, your subconscious mind is being activated. So what we're going to do today is continue that activation, all right? Myra is going to talk to you about the herbs. That's going to activate what is already inside you. Because you are at one with all of the world, whether you are aware of it or not, we're not giving you new information that you didn't know. What we're doing is activating within you what you already knew, but you probably forgot, okay? So a lot of what we're going to say is going to have like a ring of truth for you, and some of it might feel new and super inspiring, but what I want you to understand is that this information was already there. Why is this important? Well, right now, we have the sun and the new moon in Gemini, and G Gemini is really um, responsible for how we think. One of the things that you will have noticed in the, um, in the ritual and in the workbooks that I provided you was that there is a, um, a section called Native Intelligence. Gemini is responsible for your Native Intelligence. Your Native Intelligence is your natural intelligence. It's the part of you that um, is organically yours. And as humans, we're here to kind of perceive ourselves as beings with a limited kind of intelligence. Like we only know what we're told or what we read. And we give authority to those who write the books that tell us what we know. Well, what we want to do is to start giving you all the empowerment to recognize that where you are is a perception, but who you are is the truth. And the truth of who you are is beyond your native intelligence. It's beyond your physical self. It's beyond what you know of yourself. If you are in my um, Heart Centered Entrepreneur uh, program, you will know from the first exercise we did in planting your prosperity garden, we did the plastic bag meditation, right? Where you put everything in the bag, put that in the bag, put your dog in the bag, put your cat in the bag, put your parents in the bag, put your thoughts in the bag, put your beliefs in the bag, put your whole perception basically in the bag. And then the question is, well, who is looking at the bag? right? And that is the truth of who you are. You are 
not just the bag and the things in it, you're also the, 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 the vibration, the energy field that is holding your consciousness, your God self. That is the truth of who you are and you are everything. We want you to come into this ritual knowing this before you connect with these herbs because I don't want you looking at these herbs and saying, oh, herb, give me what I don't have. What we want is, herb, I see you. I feel you. I am you. We are one because that is the truth. So we want you affirming that truth. And because Gemini rules the way you use your mind and the confidence with which you use your mind, I want you right now to embrace yourself this moment and your behavior in this ritual with that kind of badass confidence, that badass confidence of Castor and Pollux. Castor and Pollux are the Greek gods, or were they Roman? <laughs> Greek gods who um, make up the constellation Gemini. One of them is human, the human brother, and the other one is the divine brother. And even though they were, they are born of different fathers, one was born of a god out of rape, and the other was born out of a, um, of a human out of love. So these two found tremendous love for one another, and to the point where they were willing to sacrifice their own beings to be at one. This is the nature of Gemini. This is the nature of kindred spirits. This is why you'll notice that right now, between uh, now and the next 28 days or so, you're going to find more tenderness within yourself, more tenderness toward your pets, more tenderness toward the people around you. You're going to feel that there's a need to reach out to other people and to connect. Mostly, you're going you're gonna to see that connection through your mind. You're going to find a kinship with people through your mind. But what I want you to understand is that kinship is actually originating in your heart. They say that Gemini is the only sign that actually does not have an ego. <laughs> You're like, what? Gemini doesn't have an ego? Because when you meet a Gemini, if you meet that Gemini with an open heart and an open mind, it doesn't matter what they were thinking before. They're probably going to recognize that open heart and open mind of where you are. And they're probably going to like drop what they were feeling before and meet you there with that same kind of love. They're very, very, very loving people. Even though they're very cerebral, they're air signs. We are going to be very Gemini-like. So I want you to embrace that spirit of Gemini and do this first for yourself because the love has to start from within, but then feel free to spread that love around, okay? All right, so that's my time. <laughs> I feel like I did not breathe at all during that. So what I want to do just for a couple of minutes, I want to open up the questions for, for you ladies here. And if you have any questions, please unmute yourself. Ask away for me particularly right now. We'll do this again after Myra has had a chance to talk to you about the magic of the herbs, okay? But if you have any questions about anything I've said or about the process, please unmute yourself and um, go ahead and talk. Okay, so it looks like everybody is really clear. So I'm going to go ahead and turn everything over to Myra, Mistress of the Herbs. I hope she calls herself that, Myra, Mistress of the Herbs. <laughs> I have not, but that's a pretty good name. Um, 
Okay, I am going to turn my camera. that we will be talking about and we'll start maybe um, a way to make a good connection for you that looks great that's perfect Myra so here's my little arrangement um, so, you know I have lost track of time Myra, I'm having a bit of a hard time hearing you while you're moving around. Sorry. Um, Myra, if you're talking right now for to us, I can't. I can't hear you. Can any? Is anybody else having a hard time hearing? Yeah, okay. okay. Um, Can you so, hear me now? Yeah, totally. 100% okay. beautifully. Okay, I'm muting myself again. Okay. So, something to keep in mind um, with these herbs as we're working with them is I like to look back and think of how herbs really started even back in prehistoric times, I'd like to think of them as our friends that are still with here now that have been here from a long, long time ago. And as they danced in the wind and they moved about, that they did release a lot of their aromas. And through studies and just imagining how, you know, at, right now we're fortunate that we can go online, you can go to a bookstore and you can buy you know, a lot of books that will teach you about these herbs, but our ancestors, they just had to go based on their senses. And that is one of the biggest gifts that herbs had um, had to give to give to our ancestors to be able to guide them and learn how to work with these herbs. And an interesting fact is that our through our sinus cavity, it is the actual, the only direct entryway to our nervous system. Um, you can think of our nervous system as kind of a, a cable. Think of a phone cable, any type of cable. And you have those electrical wires inside, but then they have a casing on the outside. So you can't really access your nervous system in any other way directly other than through our nose, through our sense of smelling. So this is why the aromas, many, all different sorts of aromas, even when you, when you smell, you know, some sort of, uh, of cooking of dessert and it reminds you of your grandmother or a certain situation or, you know, um, you know, a night that you had. This is what the herbs and their aromas can do for us. And this is what we're trying to tap into today. And Again, if you don't have, um, you find a connection with certain herbs today after learning about them and you don't have them, let's remind ourselves that this is just the beginning of the moon in Gemini. We have many days to work with this. And a lot of these herbs are around us in our neighborhood. And when you start being aware of them, they are going to start you know, realizing when you're walking past a bush of lavender and a bush of rosemary and, you know, uh, a bush of jasmine, I hope that after walking away with this, you look at them with a different type of connection and bring them back into your life. Um, so one quick second again, sorry. Um, what we can start with is lavender. Um, lavender is one of the most versatile aromas in nature. Um, not even just versatile in, in its availability, um, but also if, with its such a strong relaxing and calming to the mind and body, it really does help with balancing of all the chakras. Um, 
so here you know we have we have some lavender that's mixed in here and really today what i want to find from lavender is for it to help us encourage to speak our innermost thoughts and our wants to be true to ourselves um, lavender will help bring some alignment with the divine wisdom and to promote energy and communication and vitality and as we're working through this gemini moon you may not have lavender present at this moment but this is again when you will now open your your senses and kind of asking for these herbs to help you and as we're transitioning through this moon in gemini is just bring that lavender right back into you and it's easy to just sit back into meditation and keep going from where you left off um, there's so much to say about lavender um, in part with this gemini moon that is the twins um, it is also it's it's a herb ally for friendship and for honesty and that's really what we're trying to get this from us again is being honest with ourselves and truly finding um, truly finding what we're working with throughout this meditation. Um, the next herb that we're gonna be working with is rosemary. And rosemary is another herb that's very vastly available everywhere we are. And this is one I, um, I am very biased to working with essential oils. Um, I know that there is a lot of um, new recommendations for ingesting oils, and that's a whole different conversation that I, you know, for another topic. But there are where I feel that there is a true connection with essential oils again is with the sense of smell. Um, it is such a strong compound that it's, you know, you can take a whiff of rosemary and within seconds it would have entered your nervous system and it's going to start working its magic. And the kind of magic that rosemary is going to offer us is to really be able to concentrate. It stimulates the improvement of mental clarity. So a lot of the times, you know, when we intend to come into meditation, there may be a lot of other thoughts running through the back of our mind. At least for myself, it's where it, sometimes it takes, it takes a few tries before I can truly just concentrate and connect and rosemary is really going to help to be able to stimulate the brain and it's kind of a fast track to getting you to your concentration and being able to pay closer attention to your conscious mind um, it also helps in opening your heart chakra um, because it stimulates the flow of the conscience and mental energy you're able to have that connection um, in, in other aspects as well, um, it connects well with the lavender in that it helps to understand loyalty. Um, it also, because of its strong aroma, L lavender is very versatile because it can be gentle and it can also be strong. Um, there's different aspects to it, whereas rosemary you take a whiff of rosemary and it's it's a lot more on the strong side it it kind of gives you that big you you know you're smelling rosemary and because of that rosemary also has a lot of compounds that kind of release stagnation um so even though it does have some of the same attributes that we're looking for with this new moon in gemini as lavender it will it will work a little stronger as far as dispersing that stagnation and also removing a lot of those distractions. Um, and here, uh, it, one thing to mention is that if, if you are working with natural herbs and you're gonna use it for your concoction, a lot of the times we're drawn to just grab the rosemary sprigs and throw it into a water. Um, something that I suggest to do, I know it doesn't look as pretty, but it's to actually either using a mortar and pestle or just with your hands, it's to actually break it up. It's a lot, you get a lot more of the oils and the compounds when you start to kind of mush it and you even kind of feel the oils 
um, coming out of the herb. And if you were to really kind of shred the rosemary and take a, you know, take a good whiff of the rosemary, you're going to get a lot more of the aromatic compounds than simply just grabbing the rosemary and putting it whole into, into your water. So that's something that if, if um, you're going to start preparing your concoction in a bit, you know, if you have fresh herbs, then, and this is something that if it's already in a tea bag, then it has already been kind of crushed and the hot water is going to reactivate um, those compounds in, in the herb. But definitely, and again, I know it looks a lot prettier to, um, to just put the whole herb in your water, but you're, you're actually doing, you're doing it a favor by allowing it to fully release its, its full potential by um, breaking it apart. And I have a quick question. I have all kinds of um, alerts and oh, not coming out. Are those, are those chats? Are those? Don't worry, I've got them. No, they are not. They're just alerts on my computer, but or not. If not, I can just go ahead and ignore them. Okay, yeah, because I've got the chat. I'm chatting with some of the ladies here. Everybody's very excited <laughs> about what you're saying, so we're kind of sharing your um, sharing your 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 our excitement. All right. Okay, because yeah, I can't I can't really see my screen. I'm standing to to the side of it. Um, but okay, as long as it's not obstructing anything. And also, what what time are we beginning? To oh, we have um, I have my timer set, so we have another four minutes before um, before we need to start the water boiling. So um, I'll let you know just in two more minutes now, actually. Okay, so I'll kind of speed this up. I'm going to group together the citrus. Um, we have here lemon, orange, and I'm going to throw in there the lemongrass. And these guys, there are friendly energy boosters. Um, you know. The great thing about you can use it dried or fresh. Um, I I like to use when it comes to meditating. I like to use the fresh herb because I mean the fresh citrus. If you were to break a peel and smell it, it's almost like you're 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 inhaling a little bit of of sunshine, and you feel that energy boost. Um, it brings you, you know the feelings of, of laughter and friendship and playfulness. And this is why I brought them into this meditation for Gemini, because that's, you know, you think of, of the twins and being creative and uplifting. Um, and again, this is, it's so easy to have and to find these oranges and lemons. They're everywhere. They're, they're all, they're all over <laughs> the place, but lemongrass, Lemongrass is one that's maybe not as common or well known as the orange and and the, the lemons, but the lemongrass, again, kind of like the rosemary, where because of its strong force will kind of push, to, you know, push through the stagnation. Lemongrass is really good with clearing the energy in a bright and energetic way. Um, it's going to kind of bring up the sense of, of confidence and just letting go and any lingering negativity, we're gonna see it springing up with all of this brightness that, that's going to embody us. Um, I know I, I don't have much time, but Rose, let's, let's, um, let's go with Rose, where I think it's very important for this exact meditation to be able to connect with it's also other, other than it being very stimulating to our heart and our crown chakras this is another one that it's it's volatile compound it's very strong very profound when you take a whiff of that rose it's also an um you can mistake it for for what you're smelling it you know there is no doubt of of the sense of rose and at this moment, when you combine them, when you have a little bit of the combination of the rose and the lemon and the lemongrass is 
we're going to use this to just up, uplift us and find those joyous and promoting of healings and wounds, um, those inner wounds that we're trying to work through. We're trying to entangle them and we're trying to release ourselves from all of these old toxic energies that we've had. Um, and we'll also support in friendship and the understanding between our human selves and our divine selves. It's like that little piece of magic that's going to help us make that connection through this meditation. And then we have jasmine. Um, jasmine is just a wonderful aroma. Hey, that Myra, excuse light. me. Sorry, let me, I want to stop you right now and you can come back okay. to jasmine, but maybe we should have the ladies start preparing. What do you think? Yes. Okay, so it's 10, 15, um, and then, you know, you'll walk them th through the preparation, um, but then we still are going to have plenty of time to finish talking about Jasmine, yeah? Go for it. Okay, um, so are we needing just um, hot water right now? Is that right? So, so what we need you all to do is to start boiling your hot water and actually let me let me do this okay so we need y'all to boil some hot water right now and what we're going to do is have you get your water hot pour it over your herbal concoction um if you're using dried herbs or um fragrant or uh, dried herbs or fresh herbs you can let them let the, you're going to let the water steep on them for uh, about 15, 16 minutes, something like that. And then what you're going to do right before we start the meditation is you're going to re um, boil water and then pour the hot water, the new hot water over them again. Okay, so this first pour is going to activate the herbs and start to let them release their aromas. You should cover that um, container and then you will um, let it sit while Myra continues her discussion about the herbs, the remaining herbs. And then um, right when we're ready to start the meditation, you're going to pour more hot water on them so that the steam is reactivated. And then while I'm taking you through the meditation, you will have the herbs there to breathe in. Now, if you're using essential oils, you're going to need to do this a little bit differently because with the essential oils, we're not going to drop those in until we're actually ready to do the meditation. You don't need your essential oils to steep. They've already been distilled. So no need for that, okay? I'm, I'm saying that right, aren't I, Myra? Please correct me if I'm yes. wrong. No, absolutely correct. And just another um, little tip, if you are using essential oils, um, very little goes a long way. What we don't want is a, such a powerful um, aroma that you're going to find it distracting. So I know that maybe just one or two drops maximum of each oil that you're using should be enough to be able to gently reach your senses so that you can work with them through the meditation. Perfect. All right. So why don't you all do whatever you need to do to get yourself set up. Try to do it in just one or two minutes. Okay. And um, in the meantime, while you all are doing that, Myra, I just want to very quickly throw something out there to you and see how you feel about it. I've often used essential oils just on like a Kleenex or a tissue. Is that acceptable in this situation? Um, really it is because what we're really trying to get to is just it's really long as you can, you can get the aroma or the scent out of it. Okay. Um, it, that is really is the, the simplest and quickest way of getting, of getting to it. Um, if you happen to have any flowers, you can drop it on the flower petals. You can, you can even add it to hot water 
And then it's the same thing where the steam is going to be bringing up the aroma. But with essential oils, it is, you know, a, a lot easier to reach that aroma. So yes, just even putting it in a, in a piece of Kleenex will definitely do the job. Okay, fantastic. All right, so I'm going to mute myself and let you get back to your your talk. Thank you. It's going, you're just beautifully okay. describing everything. I'm so happy listening okay. to you. I am I am going to take a quick minute myself just because um, with all this preparation, I left my uh, my little concoction downstairs. So I'm going to run to go <laughs> grab it and then I will be back and continue. Okay, that's fine. Okay. In the meantime, let me just open up the, um, the, uh, the, you can unmute yourselves. And just if you have any questions or any comments, anything you want to share with us. I know we've had a little bit of a discussion going in the chat. I want to acknowledge everyone who's here with us today. We've got, <laughs> we've got Myra and we have Alex, Alina and Anne. Bex has joined us, although I don't see Bex on my feed here. Wait, there she is. Hi, Bex. Okay, I do see Bex here on my feed. Okay, and then I see, Hi. now, is this, I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Forgive me if I butcher it. Is it Dishley? Dishley. Dashley. D exactly, Dashley. Dashley, it's nice to meet you. I, you know, I tried to nice accent. To I tried to accentize your name. I tried to turn your name into something it was not. Okay, Dashley. You did a great job, though. <laughs> Thank you, darling. It's wonderful to meet you here. I hope nice to meet you. Yeah. I hope you can join us on Sunday when we actually get a chance to interact more because those Sunday sessions are really fun. So hopefully on Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, if you are in the You Lead Intuitive Business Development for Heart-Centered Entrepreneurs Facebook group, we meet every Sunday um, and we dive okay. deep into our stuff. So um, I know you're in the group, Deshley, so hopefully you'll join us, okay? Yes, I'd love, I will. I'm, I will try my best to this weekend. Great. And I see we also have, let's see, I said Anne, and I've got Katie. Hi, Katie. I'm glad you're joining us. And Martine, Sangita, Shayla, Susan, and the compassionate gardener, Dorta. Welcome, everybody. All right. So I see, Myra, are you, oh, yeah, I see you're back. So let's get Myra. I'm going to mute myself. Okay, I am back. And I'm, I'm going to quickly show, I don't know if maybe anybody was ahead of time and had already um, boiled their water and wants to just get back to their place. This, this is um, the pot that I had boiled the water in. And if you are interested in continuing, um, which I hope you will be, um, in using herbs in either, you know, your meditation through aroma compounds or for um for tea making i really do like um of course you can boil it in anything but i like glass um a glass tea kettle or a pot because sometimes um when you're boiling and this is more for the for the actual medicinal purposes when you're ingesting the tea um when you're using stainless steel, a lot of times it can actually mess a little bit with the compounds of the herbs. And that's just more into the chemistry side, but it, it will work. Whatever you have um, is, is good for now. But if you were interested in taking it a little step further, then a glass pot will work. I'm using a plate and <laughs> I, I put some toilet, some uh, a, a paper towel to um, clog both ends because of course I couldn't find its proper lid that it came with and just to not let some of the um, some of the heat come out but really um, what I did do right now was that I did pour um, some some more of the herbs in into this um, this thermos and I put the the boiling water in here already so that I don't have to I'm upstairs I'm far from my kitchen so and it sounds like a jungle down there right now. So I'm not trying to uh, 
to to take my laptop down there, which it's kind of funny. My kids are very curious and interested in what I'm doing up here. And, um, you know, it's nice to see that I'm, I'm passing, um, I'm, I'm passing the love of herbs on to my kids, although half the time they do not like them because, you know, they don't always taste the best, especially when you're using them for medicinal purposes. So, you know, they're very curious of what are you telling them, mom? Are you letting them know that time really tastes horrible, but you're trying to pretend that it tastes good so they want to use it? <laughs> um, but, you know, they, they make laugh about it, but um, whenever they have some sort of respiratory infection, especially my little boy who seems to often go there is, I will now find him is going to go get his time and, you know, leaving it ready for me so that, and that that's, you know, that that's the beauty of the herbs where, okay, you, you're ingesting it and you're going to get a different quality from the the medicinal aspects of the of the herbs actually <clears throat> um, penetrating into your tissues and into your skin but you can always you know through the steam do an inhalation and that's really what helps with his respiratory system and i know now i'm jumping on to time but then i thought okay well we're also using peppermint and mint so that will tie in itself together where um and sometimes it doesn't have to look so pretty um, where if you're boiling the water and you're putting the herbs into a cup and, you know, you can also just put a towel over your head and kind of bring your head towards that cup and you've kind of created your own little, little, little safe cave. That's what he calls it. His safe cave of where you can now be inhaling the the aromas from from the herbs so th this is what i have done i've put it in this flask in, in the thermos and i just brought my cup this is my little cup that i'm going to be using once i i pour it in here but if i were to be downstairs and this would be still on my stove and um the combination that i personally went with was actually not at all what i was intending to go with I had imagined, um, I had just purchased um, this really nice um, loose leaf tea combo of green tea and jasmine. And I was envisioning um, wanting to use the green tea and the jasmine and the peppermint and some of the lemons. And I have no idea what happened to my green tea and jasmine. It just got up and ran away. <laughs> Or it was spirit telling me, no, you're a little too amped up and excited about this class that you're doing this morning. So you do not need any green tea. Um, and I went with what I have here. So I am using rosemary and lemons. And I have some rose in there and some lavender. Um, and that is what I will be working with today. So um, I'm not sure if you had already opened up, but I just wanted to make sure that um, if anybody had any questions at this point um, in regards to what we're doing. You all can just unmute yourselves and ask away. Hi, Myra, this is Bex. Hi, Bex, how are you doing? This is wonderful, thank you so much. I, I'm just in, inquiring about the lemons and the oranges because I, I didn't um, get any, the, the lemons that I have aren't organic and nor are, is the orange. So I just mm -hmm. squeeze the juice. What do you recommend when, you know, because I don't want to put the, um, what do you recommend? Um, well, there's a few ways you can go about this. If you are wanting to drink the the tea the decoction that you're making then if they are not organic um then i would definitely go with just using the juice um, so you just put a little bit of juice in the tea after it's boiled or in um uh, you you put it in the infusion i would put some in the infusion while it's boiling mm -hmm. and then i would also just put some fresh juice afterwards so that you okay. have the combination of it both already being infused and then um, only because 
with the citrus, the heat will actually, you're going to, you're going to see this yourself. You're going to find that it's going to kind of deter some of the aroma. Um, it's essence. It's still there, but not the freshness that you're looking for from the citrus. So if you have, you can save some of the juice and right when you're about to start, just when we're pouring over the, the breast of the boiling water, you're going to want to add some of the fresh juice onto there as well. Okay. Um, another option is, um, you know, I, I try to find ways of, of helping people who do not have access to organic goods. That's where a, a lot of my passion is, is working with um you know, with lower income and, you know, they, they don't always actually, they don't very often at all have access to organic um, produce or fruits and vegetables. So another thing that I like to promote is you can also wash, which actually it would be kind of like submerging and um, leaving the lemons in a mixture of water and a little bit of peroxide and vinegar. And that can actually help release some of the pesticides that are in those peels because you're not actually going to consume the peels. Um, so that's another way of getting rid, rid of pesticides. And that can work. Um, it, it will not work very well with all of these other herbs, but because the peel is so much stronger, um, it will be, it will effectively remove some of those um, pesticides and whatnot from the peel, um, well, from the thing. porous side of it. So even with vegetables, with, with all sorts of other um, non-organic produce, um, you know, you, ca you can do a very, maybe leave it steeping in, in, in this mixture of water for about 10, 15 minutes, and then just rinsing it thoroughly afterwards, and you get rid of, of a lot of the pesticides. And then lastly, you can use it just as the, you know, inhaling the infusion of the aroma. And then at this point, those pesticides are not going to come through in, in the, the oil and the aroma that you're inhaling. They're going to stay put with the water. So um, you wouldn't want to drink this water afterwards, but you can use the steam um, and just get the, you know, the, the aroma from it. But lemons and oranges are wonderful so that is a, a very lovely tea that you can drink but you have a few different options there you know it Thank seems you. like um opening an orange or opening a lemon you know just like peeling it and smelling the inside of that peel my god it just is so such an amazing experience having an orange oh i'm eating this orange oh my god i'm having an orgasmic experience here as i have my snack it's pretty powerful stuff man makes you it, it, makes you glad is. to be alive and if if you're very mindful of it a lot of the times while you're actually peeling that orange, you feel a little bit of the juice and it's almost like you can see it in slow motion, like the little spritz of it coming out. So it really is um, a, a, an amazing little gift to uh, tap into with the citrus, but. Awesome. All right. So ladies, I'm sorry, I'm going to get us going right now on the um, on the ritual because we're already at 1033 and we've got the moon hitting her apex in just five minutes. So um, I want you all to take the time now. I mean, first of all, I must, we need a round of applause for Myra because this woman is like, woohoo, this is a master of, I'm sorry, the herbal mistress. This is the herbal <laughs> mistress for sure. Um, so thank you so much, Myra. I'm so uplifted because of just what you've said and I'm so inspired today. Um, Excellent. All right. So what I want you all to do is to get ready to meditate. Yeah. So definitely you need your hot water. You're going to want to reactivate your um, herbal essences using the hot water, doing that in your way. And as soon as you get that poured, I am going to um, start the meditation. So excited.
Um, a quick note is if you're going to be um, inhaling the aroma through the steam, um, you can also use, I'm, I'm just using the stick from the lavender, but if you have a spoon or something, as you mix it, um, you will see the steam rising and therefore the aroma accentuating itself. Such beautiful work we're doing. All right, ladies, so you can just now start getting into your own personal space. This is your time right now to connect with yourself and these beautiful herbs that are here sharing themselves with you. This vibration of spirit and form in the form of lavender, rosemary, citrus, whatever it is you're using, whatever has come forth for you. And you can take a few moments to say thank you. And I want you to thank yourself, first of all, for coming here today, for having the wherewithal to come to this session. And I want you to thank yourself for being open and receptive to the herbs that you're working with. And you can also extend those thanks, of course, to the herbs themselves. So go ahead, you can close your eyes and start breathing in and connecting to those essences. Taking some slow, deep breaths. And as you're connecting with these herbs, just letting your body and your mind relax. Allowing yourself to float and expand. Breathing deeply. Letting my voice be something that guides you, but not what you focus on. Let your focus be on your breath and your nasal, your, 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 your smelling mechanism. Expanding your awareness to include our beloved moon, who has been here acting as our sacred and divine mother throughout all our lives, throughout all our lifetimes on earth. The moon has been there for us. She's responsible for our feelings of safety, our feelings of security feelings of connection. So taking some slow, deep breaths. This is a very important time, my beloved friends. The universe, your spirit guides, your ancestors, the devas and elementals, the angels and archangels, the ascended masters, they are all gathering around you as you inhale these beautiful herbal essences and life force energy. So inhale all this benevolent energy and exhale resistance.
taking slow, deep breaths as you call in your spiritual guidance team. And you release anxiety, distraction, fear, and doubt. Inhale. And exhale. While you're relaxing into your being, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the new moon and take you on a journey to open your mind and your heart to her divine feminine presence. Just being present with your herbs, uniting, becoming one with yourself, Recognizing your connection, breathing and relaxing. Let yourself feel supported as you breathe and relax. A new moon, because of the way the earth and sun cycle, is nearly always a tiny, thin sliver of a crescent shape. It is never fully blocked except during an eclipse. And we are provided a mere hint of the moon's presence and location. We can observe where it is and what it represents. Still, this thin sliver of the new moon is a rare thing to see due to the orbits of the moon and earth. The new moon is briefly glimpsed near sunset. Other than that, the sun's bright light blinds us to the moon's presence. The moon's view when she is new is a gift to those who take the time to be aware. The new moon might be all but invisible, but its force still impacts us. The new moon is a time of fresh beginnings, just a seed, one that is hidden beneath the earth. The new moon brings us a renewing start from its place of near invisibility. Visualize this sliver of a new moon calling you from the horizon. Use your imagination and imagine that the moon with its Shining crescent is a beacon hovering at the edge of sky and earth. Take some deep breaths and connect to that thin sliver of light. As you inhale, see that gorgeous crescent moving closer and closer to you still. As you exhale, relax your body and expand your mind. Inhale and draw down the moon. Exhale and expand your awareness. As the moon gets closer to you, reach out and gather all her brilliant energy and funnel it into your third eye. I'm going to ask you to let this crescent moon activate your subconscious mind. So just do your best to relax, be present, and allow.
taking some deep breaths into the silence. While you're relaxing and releasing, I'm going to speak to your energetic self and give it some information that you will need later. So you don't need to worry about taking this information in now. I'm speaking to your latent self, which is being activated with the light of this new moon. So bring your awareness to the, to the space about one meter or about one yard above your head and imagine a brilliant star there. A brilliant star about one meter or one yard above your head. See if you can link in to that light. And just imagine that a lovely cord of light drops down and enters the top of your head, moves down your spine, all the way down your back, through your tailbone, and connects to another brilliant star, which is located about 12 inches or a foot below where you are sitting. So just take some deep breaths. And just be aware of that light cord that goes from your highest chakra to you, from your celestial star chakra to your earth star chakra. And just feel the flow of energy in that cord. Feel it intensifying with every breath that you take. And I'm going to speak to your latent self. Remember who you are, beloved. Remember your true father. Remember your true mother. Remember who you are. Your divine monadic self is perfect, whole, and complete. You are safe. You are safe. You are safe. You are safe to create. You are safe to create. You are safe to carry and develop. You are safe to carry and develop. You are safe to give birth. You are safe to give birth. You are safe to raise. You are safe to raise. You are safe. You are safe. 
You are safe. You are safe. Your divine monadic self is perfect, whole, and complete. Remember who you are. Remember your true mother. Remember your true father. Remember who you are, beloved. And just breathe into this activation. Just taking some deep breaths. And with your next inhalation, I want you to say out loud, I am activated. Just in your own time. I am activated. And just sit quietly in this activated state. As you prepare to move forward into doing your magical manifestation work with this new moon, I want to do a little more work with your subconscious mind and your energetic system. This is important. I want you to have a solid footing on the earth so that you can create, carry and develop, birth and raise your desires with integrity. So let's take a few moments and provide a safety blanket for your shadow self. The shadow self is the subconscious mind, that part of you that does not feel safe or heard. And as a result, it can sabotage your creations. So it's our job as the authority within ourselves to foster an environment of cooperation inside ourselves. This new moon is also called the black moon because at this time of the month, we are seeing the unilluminated side of the moon. So the rich indigo darkness of the new moon can be likened to the sacred void. The sacred void can be understood as pure awareness, the canvas on which all of life is painted. This sacred void is what makes the new moon so powerful for manifesting because you are connecting directly with the substance of the universe with the intention to create a powerful future for yourself. So if you have any anxiety right now, just allow yourself to sink into it, accepting your oneness with the canvas on which all of creation is painted. So take some deep breaths. And keeping your eyelids closed, very gently roll your eyeballs toward um, upward toward a 45 degree angle so that you're focusing your energy on your third eye. And you might feel a little bit of strain as you're rolling your eyes upward toward your third eye. Just allow that strain for a few moments before you release it because that's helping to activate and to strengthen that area. It's strengthening your sight. Your third eye chakra is an energy center that helps you access your intuition. So taking some deep breaths, 
Just focus your, your attention on your third eye for several moments. And it might help you to imagine a rich indigo blue, the color of the night sky. Remembering to breathe. Just sinking deeply into the peace of this sacred void. With your next inhalation, breathe in safety, wholeness, and completion. Safety, wholeness, and completion. And when you exhale, let go of any resistance, fear, or doubt that might be hiding in your subconscious mind. Let it go. Inhale safety. I am safe. Exhale fear. I am safe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale and exhale. Surrendering to this process is going to help you resolve any feelings of loneliness, isolation, or fear that you may be harboring. As you sink into the indigo spectrum of being, Feel yourself surrendering any tension or holding patterns. You are fully supported here. You are fully loved unconditionally. See if you can let go and let God, Goddess, source of all. Inhale. And exhale. This practice is deeply healing for your shadow because this profound peace and connection with the sacred void is what your ego has been resisting. It is this sense of nothingness that scares the ego. It is in the sacred void that you lose your identity and you become at one with the canvas of life itself. Spending peaceful time here, knowing that you are safe, is profoundly healing and will transform your mindset. It will transform your life. So in your own personal time, take several minutes as often as you can to just sit and unwind, releasing and letting go, rebuilding and repairing your entire being from the inside out. You can intentionally breathe this sense of peace through all of your chakras, starting with your root, then your sacral chakra, your solar plexus, your heart, your third eye, your throat, and your crown. Feeling yourself at one with all. We are about to start wrapping up this meditation. And I want to leave you with a few ideas 
I want you to remember that this is a time for beginnings, for your new beginning, for the start of all you hold dear. Your dreams exist, they are in your life, and the first day for them has arrived. Imagine your dream as existing now, today. Your dream is in progress. It is here. Say to yourself, either out loud or within yourself, I have the dream I desire. Say it again more strongly. I have the dream I desire. And more strongly still, I have the dream. I have the dream I desire. Open your mind further to see the full path of this dream. You are already on your way. The beginning is here. Now all that is needed is for you to follow that path to its logical con conclusion. Let your soul be uplifted by contentment that this dream is right for you. It is meant for you. Everything about the dream is a perfect fit. You have already begun on your way. The rest is simply following through with that path. My dream unfolds easily and effortlessly, like the petals of a rose. I am that I am. Namaste. Very gently very gently bringing your awareness into your room, not by opening your eyes, but by opening your senses. Inhale deeply the essence of your space. Feel the energy around you. Reach out and feel your aura. Notice the surface on which you're sitting or resting, awakening that sense of touch, that feeling nature, noticing the sounds. I know I'm in your voice, in your ears right now, so you can hear me. <laughs> but feeling the vibration of your space, the pressure of the wall behind you the pillows behind you, just feeling your connection in the world. You're a multi-dimensional being. You have a high awareness of your three-dimensional self, but there are so many dimensions to who you are. Use your senses now to bring you back into the 3D. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come fully into your space, really firming up your connection with the 3D. All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> All right. Very good. So I'm going to have us start wrapping up the med this, this ritual. Now, you all know that as a part of the ritual in the packet that I give you, I have you writing down goals and I have you making a plan of action for those goals, right? You're going to do that in your own time, but I want you to do that. Your goals, your dreams need your participation. 
you have done a beautiful job of connecting with the energetic aspect of your being. When we end this call, I would really, really suggest that you take some time to think about what it is you want, what it is you desire, what you want to create, and write it down, type it down, right? Type it in. And, um, make a plan. It doesn't have to be a full-fledged plan, but just take action, multi-dimensional action on the thing you desire. Thinking is one level of action, but taking um, uh, a physical action like making a list even if it's a list of phone calls that you need to make or need a list of people you need to see, this does wonders to activate your dream in the universe, okay? You know, these herbs that we're working with, as Myra has described, they have a lot of power, but I don't know. I want you to realize that these guys are now your allies. You now have Rosemary for your ally. She's a strong ally, like Ganesha, like Lord Ganesha, to knock down the obstacles within yourself and in the three-dimensional world to bring your power forward. Rosemary's going to help you do that. Rose is going to help you soften. I'm talking about the flowering rose, rose and rosemary, right? But the strength of that rose is there too. But her thing is more about helping you become more receptive, more loving, more partnered, right? More willing to participate, to cooperate. And of course, the color of that rose, if you've got a pink rose or a red rose, it's about really connecting with that inner self and giving yourself self-love. So talk to your herbs and your essences and um, see what they want to tell you because they are connected to the universe in a way that your conscious self can use to inform your actions and give you beautiful insights. All right. So I'm going to open the, um, I'm going to let you all unmute yourselves. If there's anything you would like to share, any questions you have for myself or Myra, Myra, you can unmute yourself, of course. And, um, let us know how you're doing. That was amazing. Thank you both very much. That was a beautiful meditation. And I loved inhaling. I did citrus. And it was amazing. It was really powerful. Thank you both very much. Yes, you're welcome, Anne. You're welcome. Yeah, the citrus is just so... So talkative. Yeah. What what a great like aroma to bring in for Gemini, right? Because Gemini is known as being <laughs> chatty, right? Every astrologer will tell you Gemini mm -hmm. is chatty. Boy, orange, lemon, grapefruit. Oh my God. So vibrant. So alive. Mm -hmm. Wonderful choices for us. Mm -hmm. Very good. Can I ask a question? Of course. Sangeeta. <laughs> so, are the, uh, so like this time we use these herbs. So does it change with the, the moon uh, and the, this thing every time? Or is it like uh, you have the similar kind of herbs going into, like now we are in Gemini and then you move into Cancer. So would that change the herbs that you use? Myra, would you like to answer that? Yes. Um, you're going to have a few that are going to remain throughout the year. You have your, your lavender and your rosemary, your, your powerhouse herbs that are really just helping you to connect with yourself and through your meditation and your inner work. And then you're going to have other herbs or citruses like the, the lemon and um, other scents that will change throughout the year, whereas um, closer to the winter, um, you know, you're going to have uh, more warm, um, warming herbs versus the, 
the light and joyful and, and burst of sunshine. So um, it, it is good. And you know, when, if you look back at, at the, um, at the descriptions that were given, you can find, you're going to be able to connect. That's really the most important part I feel is that what you connect and what you have work to do with. And that you don't just, oh, well, Gemini's over, summer's over, and you forget about that herb. When you make a true connection, then it may be that your work is going to take a while and you keep going back. And maybe right now, if this is the first time that we're doing this, it may feel a little bit foreign or strange, but as you keep connecting those same thoughts and that same work with an herb, then once, even when you pass by it, when you have it in your presence, you're going to connect to it again. So I would say find a few of your powerhouses, maybe have those stick with you throughout the year so that you really create a bond. And then there will be other aromas that will come into visit depending on the seasons. Fantastic. So, so beautiful. So beautifully expressed. And, um, uh, you know, Myra, you're stimulating in me. You're, you're, what I'm hearing you say is that there's a cycle to your thoughts and your thinking and your growth. And one of the ways that I like to use the new moon, and, you know, if you've been following me for a while, then you'll know, you've heard me say this, the new moon is the time for creation. It's the time to plant the seed for what it is you want to manifest. And you're going to take action and you are going to, um, you're going to do what you need to do between now and the manifestation of your thing, your dream. But at the full moon, so in six months, we're going to have the full moon in the exact same sign. So around November, December, end of November, beginning of December, we're going to have the full moon in Gemini. So this is when you must come to account for your promise that you made six months prior at the new moon today okay so the reason why full moons are so challenging emotionally and physically is because it's when we have to account for the promises we made six months ago now you all we all are account are making promises all the time every time you say you're going to do something every time you wish that you had something what you're saying is I want that and you're putting yourself closer to that thing when you acknowledge that and you go for it you're in an active co-creating relationship with the universe but when you wish on something and you go in the opposite direction I, I wish that I were healthier. I wish that I were a better partner. But you go toward overeating and you go toward not listening to your partner, right? Those are the choices you make in your life. What you're doing is breaking your promise. And broken promises do not sit well in this universe. This is the problem that we are all suffering with today. So when the moon, the full moon comes in six months, whatever promises you've made and you've not honored, you're going to have to account for. So we tend to feel sluggish. We tend to feel sad. We notice that people are coming up. Our shadow is rising so that we can deal with it. So the full moon in six months is an opportunity for you to revisit what you did today. This is another reason why I emphasize ritual so much for all my people, heart-centered entrepreneurs in particular, but it's your way of being in conscious relationship with our divine universe. And it is the way for you to master your energy and your mindset and to take responsibility for your dreams. Okay. And I guess just the last thing I'm going to say on this is to think about the cycle of creation as being a 10 month process. 
what else is a 10 month process that comes to the top of your mind? 40 weeks, 10 months, 40 weeks. Exactly as Dorta's saying, as she's doing the I got a baby dance, okay? That's why in this new moon meditation, we're setting you up. We talked about safety, uh, creating, developing, nurturing. This is what happens when you are pregnant, right? Your system is developing this baby inside. You've had the act of creation, you now have the baby growing, and then you're going to give birth. That is the cycle of manifestation for ourselves and our mindset, our energy, and for our dreams. Okay? All right. Anybody else with questions, comments, anything you want to share? I, I would like to just take a quick moment and thank, thank every single one of you for for being here for this platform and for this opportunity to be able to share um this great passion of mine with you all and crystal thank you so much for for that for honoring that connection and that instinct of yours to to have me to be able to share all of this and i really hope that um that you guys are able to carry the magic of these herbs with you throughout just past today and bring them into your life grow even if it's a small plant on your windowsill and i'm sure many of you are already using them in your cooking but then you know that we honor that connection in every which way that we see these herbs but thank you thank you very very much you're very welcome, Myra. Thank you for being open. Do you know how many people I've approached with opportunities to work with me? And they're like, I'm afraid. I can't. I don't know how. I'm scared. And you were like, yes. There was not an ounce of hesitation. So yes, I've definitely met a sister. I've definitely met a sister. <laughs> Many sisters. And, and, and that's not to say there was not an ounce of fear or shyness. Of, and it's all just in the root of making sure that the, the proper message is being sent and received. And yeah. that's really of just trying to do my best for the better of, of the group. Yeah, that's, that's important. Thank you. And the integrity is, is important, for sure. Yes. yes. Anybody else want to share something? Texting. Let's see, hold on. Oh, there's a lot. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, hold on. Wait a second. Okay. Oh, okay, you. got you. Well, Bex, if there's not a lot of sense of smell, then that's where you can connect by ingesting it. And the, you ingesting it, you're going to take on a flavor, but your body, your tissues, your organ, your soul is still going to absorb a lot of that magical sense from the herbs. Yes. That's great. Alina says that she's um, going to keep the aroma in her room for the next few days, and she's also made a vision board, which is awesome. We're going to be doing that, by the way, in the uh, Prosperity Garden uh, program. Um, not this week, uh, not next week, but the following week. I, I need us to get through the chakras, right? So right after that, we're going to do um, we're going to do a, some vision boarding. So it'll be awesome. All right, and lots of thanks here. Folks are obsessed with lavender. Everybody's like high five and lavender. Deshley's got a uh, lavender heart out there. Like we are just all over the lavender for sure. Yes. All right. Anybody else before we sign off? All righty. When is the next meeting? <laughs> Alina's like, when's the next meeting? So, um, Alina, you're not in my heart-centered entrepreneur group. I want you to join it. Come join us. It's there on Facebook. Um, wait, actually, I can put a link in. 
um, we meet together every Saturday. I'm sorry, every Sunday, not every Saturday. Every Sunday, we meet in that group. This is a free group that I host um, because I'm following my passion. I follow my intuitive guidance and spirit said to do this. And so we're doing that. I take us through curriculum um, to help us connect with our heart, to be a heart-centered entrepreneur, um, which means that we must begin with a connection to our heart and to our soul. So let me give you a link to that uh, group you lead. Here it is. And um, in order to join the group, you have to complete an application. The link to the application is on the description uh, for the Facebook group. So you'll see it there and you'll get that link to, uh, to come and join us. Um, can you see the link there? Did I sent it to everyone, so you should be able to see it there, Alina. Okay, great. You'll need to click on that link before we hang up, otherwise you'll lose it, okay? Um, but this group is just magical. This is where we meet. Um, we are interacting throughout the week. I give you curriculum of things to study and to consider every week. And then uh, we meet on Sundays to kind of just uh, commune and to connect and uh, learn. All right. Um, but then, of course, I publish the full moon. Uh, we'll have in two, two weeks, we're having a full moon uh, ritual. Uh, we don't do rituals live every month because it's just a little bit too much. Um, just physically time, it's very time consuming because <laughs> we have, a, it's a lot, as Myra learned, it's a lot to prepare, like, you know, all the, the information that we want to give you so that we can deliver you um, stuff that's very high quality. I'm very much about like high quality stuff. So um, I need time. So we do the live rituals. Maybe we can do one next month. I'd love to do a, a one next month if Myra is open for doing another new moon ritual with me next month we can talk about that we need to see the timing of course and everything but I also need to respect Myra's um, um, time and you know her own personal goals we haven't talked about that we only met two weeks ago you know we only had our first conversation you know we had our first real conversation one week ago so we are some fast moving butterflies up in this group I gotta say um, so, right, we'll see though, but if you join that group, you will definitely know when things are happening because I'm good for posting stuff, okay? Keeping everybody aware, all right? And tagging people. I'd be tagging y'all in that Facebook group, right? Hey, um, you need to do a welcome. Hey, um, I haven't heard from you. Where are you at? Like, there's a lot of shouting out to people there. <laughs> That's how I like it. <laughs> All right, everybody. So if there are no more questions or comments, we will um, go ahead and sign off. Oh, sorry. Desh Lee says, it has a question. The symbols that appear to us during the meditation, how would, should we translate them ooh, into the next few months? Um, Desh Lee, do you mind unmuting yourself and telling me what your symbols are? Okay, so I saw... This might sound a little funny. So I saw a dragonfly, and I also saw the number 46. Okay. And then, it could be an angel number, I don't know, I might look that up. And then I also saw another symbol, which I feel like I would associate it with the symbol of fire, um, but like a kanji symbol. What's and a kanji symbol? Sorry. Symbol. I'm going to look like that up. Japanese. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kanji symbol. I don't know how to spell kanji, apparently. Mm -hmm. Let's see what comes up. And it comes up? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. My internet connection is unstable. Um, and what else did you see, darling? Uh-oh, did I lose? Did I get lost? It's like the... Sorry, I'm, I know that my... I saw that, and then... No, you're fine. 
oh, sorry, my internet connection when I go online to look up stuff throws me off. Like it can't handle Zoom and internet browsing for whatever reason, okay? Um, sorry, what, and I, so I missed, oh, okay, I see the kanji. So it's a symbol of wisdom, is that right? I believe it stands um, for fire. There might be more to it. I don't really, I've never really looked into it in okay. depth. So there might, yeah. So interesting okay. and some other shapes and stuff, but. Okay. So, so I think that, um, so you said that it was the number 46. What was the first symbol you said? Dragonfly. Ah, dragonfly. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's beautiful, actually. Um, so. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to to look up dragonfly meaning because um, mm -hmm. I'm feeling a little bit of an overwhelm when I think about dragonfly right now because I'm actually in a relationship with dragonfly, but I'm not, and it's it's a it's a relationship that we're blossoming right now, so I, I'm not able to give you a lot of insight. However. If you look up dragonfly spiritual meaning, you'll find plenty online, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the number 46, mm -hmm. I can answer to immediately. Um, so 46 represents the feeling of authority um, as expressed through the number four and the number six. The number four represents safety, security, and home. It's the number of the moon right? So, sorry, the moon is represented by double, 20, uh, double twos, which are four, right? So it's a, an aspect of four. Mm -hmm. so, so you've got the moon blessing, but you also have the security of a container. So the thing that I would want you to kind of explore is how can you find authority within yourself because whenever you're working mm -hmm. with the number four yes it represents outward home it represents um you know your four walls of your home and the security but it also represents being boxed in right so one of the things that comes with when you are a number four is how do you allow your authority to come when you're in confinement, for example, with shelter in place, right? How do you allow, um, how does the authority in your own home flow? Are you, are you, are you or your cats in authority? Does your cat come like and rule your household or do you rule your household, <laughs> you know, like in with respect with your animals, right? So <laughs> these are the kinds of things that come up with the number four. The number six is about having harmony. So finding your authority along with harmonizing an environment. So when you walk into a place that is unharmonious, finding your authority within yourself and then letting that radiate out into your environment, that's the nature of number six. So I would say that the number 46 is about establishing your authority through these two kinds of ways of expression. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, Thank you so much for getting into that. Appreciate I, it. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm sorry. I can't give you anything on Kanji. I'm just like, my computer won't even let me see the sign. I don't even know. And I'm like, okay, I'm not able to tune in right now. So, all right. All right. Um, okay. Are there any other questions? Anybody, please feel free to unmute yourself and, and just speak. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and sign off. All right. All right, everybody. Big hugs and kisses to everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Hey, Myra, if you'll stay on for a second afterward, I'd love to talk to you, okay? okay. But everybody else, we'll say ciao for now. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right. So, Myra, it was great. You did a wonderful job. Oh, how was that? Really? Oh, it was fantastic. No, it was wonderful. I really 
took, I was so inspired by everything you were saying. I was very much caught up in the whole experience. And um, the, is this your first time, like, doing this kind of a class? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Really, 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 really fantastic, darling. Um, I'm just, I'm really, I'm so impressed. You were easy. You were um, uh, articulate, beyond articulate. You gave good, meaningful information. This is not my first herb class, and I have high expectations when I um, when people talk and um, everything you said was so meaningful and soulful, but also, you know, you spoke about it like it was science as well. So for me, it was just wonderful, just wonderful. Yes. Thank you very much.